Hi, Randy Kay here. We all go through struggles at times, and I want to share with you through stories and insights and interviews with others how much God loves you. He loves you immensely, and that's what I hope you will hear through our interviews and what we have to share with you. Thanks for staying tuned. Here we go. Welcome to this episode of Revelations from Heaven. My guest today, Gail Walters, has a story that I'm very confident you have never heard in your life. She went to heaven, she met angels, she met George Washington in heaven. She then reluctantly wanted to come back, but then she saw Jesus and the Lord God, and they told her that she needed to stay because there was a message that she was instructed to come back with. And she noticed a downward looking George Washington. There's a reason for that. She is a direct message for the United States of America today and a message for all of you around the world that you will want to hear. So Gail, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you, Randy. I'm so thrilled to finally be able to be here with you. Well, the thrill is all ours. And you are the first person that I have met who is a nuclear designer. At the time you had your accident, you were an apprentice, a very precise individual, very scientifically minded. But then you took a, a boat ride because this boat was going out. It was a marine boat to investigate marine life, sharks and the like. Yeah. And then uh, you had an accident. Tell us about that. Well, I, I, I knew a lot of people with boats working at the shipyard on submarines. And a friend of mine was taking out some Virginia marine scientists to go on a shark expedition. Now, you know, I really couldn't swim, but, which is ridiculous, right? But I was like, it's too exciting. I have to go. So <laughs> I went. And um, once I was on the deck, there were sharks everywhere. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to fall overboard. So I was like, well, I'm going to go down in the galley and I'm gonna wash up dishes so I can stay safe, you know. And I went down the galley and the boat rose and then slammed down on a, on a, a, in the valley of a wave. And when it slammed down, I didn't brace myself and I slammed against the galley sink. And I didn't know in that moment, I started bleeding internally, you know, but I knew it hurt, but I wasn't going to tell anybody because I I, I, I wasn't going to whine, you know what I mean? I was going to mess this up for everybody because everybody's like, we're supposed to be out there for three days. But if I'd have stayed there for three days on that boat, um, I would have bled to death on the boat because of the rocking, you know. And uh, so what happened was right after I got hurt, someone screamed from the deck that a shark bit one of the scientists' hands. I mean, they didn't know at the time that if you turn a sand shark on its on its back, it won't bite. It, you know, it doesn't go um, what they call asleep, but a, a big shark will if you flip it over. But they didn't know at the time sand sharks won't. So sand shark just turned his hand into hamburger meat. It was terrible. So we had to turn that boat around and rush back to shore and get into the hospital. And so that ended the trip. So those, so for the next few days, I just slowly bled, trying to ignore the pain. And, uh, and until the morning that I shockingly died. <laughs> well, you did, were not aware, Gail, that you were dying. And, no. Until no. the crisis hit. Yeah. And which which uh, forced you to be taken to the hospital right. where it was diagnosed. Right. But you had been bleeding for a period of time. At least three days. And it was getting worse. But, you know, it's an interesting thing. You always think you're going to be better. You always feel like, yeah, when you're young especially, you think death, you didn't, it doesn't cross your mind. But, you know, I've learned there's a thin line between life and death, as I know you know too. I mean, you cross over, uh, it, game over. You're on the other side, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I woke up in the middle of the night, and, and I, I, um, I, 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 I was at my friend David's house, who was captaining the boat, because I was feeling kind of sick. I said, "Can I lay down before I go home?" And uh, 
So I laid down and I must have fallen into deep sleep because I woke up about three o'clock in the morning and pain just all over my body. And it was so bad. I knew I was dying. You know, it's like gut instinct. We know when we're dying, you know, we go through a lot of things and we go, well, I'm not dying, but the instant you're dying, you know it. And I knew it. And I could see at the end of the bed, I scrambled up on my knees because I was going to call on God because what else are you going to do? I mean, I love God all my life. I've, I've been a Christian all my life. I've known him since I was a kid, you know. So, I, I of course, I'm classic, you know, sinner like everybody else, right? But trusting Jesus to forgive me and, you know, forgive my sins and, and save me. But, um, but I loved God. I tried, you know and uh, to do my best but i i called on god I had all the faith in the world in him of course and uh i was on my knees and at the end of the bed i could see the entity of death you know i was it was shocking it looked like a wispy tall shadowy entity which i've learned when you're on this side you see the other side is shadows when you're on that side, you see this side is shadows. Very interesting, I think. So, um, it's a great explanation like, because oftentimes, uh, yours truly and others have said that heaven is more real than this life. It is. And that's the first time I've heard it explained so well that there's a shadow effect in the spiritual realm from our perspective in this body, and from the other side, this world appears as a as a shadow. So you saw the. The uh, it's commonly called the angel of death, but this was yeah. uh, not 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 God's following angels, but this was a, a demon of sorts. Yeah, I knew it. the way I felt in my spirit was this is my enemy. This is mankind's enemy. He's not taking me out now. You know what I mean? I was 25 and I wasn't afraid to die because I knew because of Jesus I was going to heaven. You know, but but i was mad you know i was in so much pain but i was mad at death i was like how dare you you know try to take me out at 25 you know and i had a son i'd had a teenage marriage that lasted you know about five minutes but i did have a son from that and he was about six years old and i was like I have to see him raised i have to make sure he knows god you know like my parents did with me and um so i just started yelling well my body was becoming so weak i mean it, it's amazing you lose energy you have no more energy so i i was just losing energy so i was calling on god god just don't let me die don't let me die i've seen my son raised and i pointed at the the entity and commanded him and the only reason i did is because my spirit rose up I felt my spirit rise up for the first time in my life. It's like it started taking over. It's like when your body starts failing, your soul comes forth. It's an interesting thing. You know, yes. we usually, our soul is like our conscience way back tucked inside of us. But when you're dying, it like rises up, you know, and it's a warrior. And it's like, and I was like commanding death. You will obey God, you know, you will not take my life. And I and I screamed out for David, who was asleep in front of his living room TV, and I said, Call an ambulance. I'd never called an ambulance in my life. I was kind of embarrassed, you know, but hey, I knew I was dying. I knew I wouldn't make it to a hospital if if God didn't intervene because I didn't know what was wrong. I had no idea it's bleeding to death. Because it's internal. I just knew the pain that bad, you're you're dying, you know. And, and it was interesting. I, I forgot to mention that a loud sound had woke me up. It's like our brain warns us when we're dying. I thought that, I think that's very interesting. Uh, just a little detail there. Uh, I think it's the last sound a lot of people hear is that alarm going off in their head. Mm -hmm. It's like failure, failure, warning. Um, so he called an ambulance. And as soon as they arrived in the middle of the night, it's about three o'clock in the morning now. Um, the pain went away. It just mysteriously disappeared. And I, I was like, I didn't know that my abdomen, because I was bleeding to death, had become paralyzed. 
and you don't feel the pain. You know, what's it, what is it called when, when that happens? It's I, I don't know what it's called. Well, it's but, a like, phenomena, yes, where the paralysis is, is where basically the nerve endings are failing. But isn't that in, isn't that amazing that God designs the body so at the sure. point where there is great pain, He has designed a mechanism to relieve you of that pain. And, yeah. and at that point, you were on the cusp of of entering into uh, the afterlife. Yes, I was. And, I, you know, because the pain was gone, uh, I was embarrassed. I never called an ambulance. I, I was telling them, guys, you can leave. I'm okay. And they were like, I know you hardly have any blood pressure. We're taking it in. So they took me in. And as I was being wheeled to an x-ray room because no doctor was there. There's a small satellite hospital in Gloucester, Virginia, very close to Yorktown, you know, right across from Yorktown where George Washington won America's independence. And, um, and, and so no doctor was even there. Just, you know, a basic little staff, 1981, you know. And uh, so they, they were willing me towards an x-ray room to see if what was wrong with me, you know. I, I guess it's all they needed to do. They never give me no medication. I had nothing because I was feeling better, you know. And so as we went in the x-ray room, I stood up. She asked me to get up on the wheelchair and stand up from the x-ray machine. Put your chin up here. I was like, sure, sure, I can do that. So I stood up. And as she's walking away to her cubicle in front of me, she said, oh, don't worry now. We called a doctor, a surgeon. Uh, I don't know why, but she said, we called the surgeon. He, he's asleep in his home, but he doesn't live far. Don't feel bad. And, don't worry. And, <laughs> and at that moment, the nausea came over me again. The pain was starting to come back. I was like, and someone had said that I was green. You know, my, I turned green. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I've never been green. And now the pain's back. Now I'm nauseated. Um I was like, oh, my gosh, something's wrong. There's no doctor to even see me. So I, I just said to God, I said, God, I'm in your hands uh, all the way, whatever happens. So I, I stood there, and as she started running the machine, the lights went down, the machine started, and then, bam, pain hit me in the center of my chest. That's when my heart stopped. It was, like, unbelievable. It felt like a baseball bat. It hit my chest. And, and I stood there, and my knees buckled, and I'm watching my own body fall away from me on the right. Mm. I had never heard of this. I'm standing there, and my body's falling to the floor in slow motion. Mm. You know, suddenly now everything's happening in slow motion. It's, I don't know why, you hear that firemen experience that when a fire is coming towards them they have to put something over. things go into slow motion to give them time it's very interesting i don't know what that phenomenon is but i certainly experienced it and um uh, and i i was just thinking oh my gosh i i i've never heard of this you know so i, I was calling a guy going what is what kind of disease is this that i've got did you watch your own body fall you know i didn't realize i was separating my soul was separating from my body it was literally separating and so i'm still standing there with my mind all my earthly knowledge you know my same personality uh, and i feel like me you know but i i, I reach down i'm trying to grab my body because i'm embarrassed you know i mean because i've never lost control like this you know i mean who has that comes back to tell about it you know and so i I look at the x-ray tech wanting help and I'm like, but she now looks like a ghost to me. She's frozen in time and she looks like a ghost. Uh, I'm, I, I'm like, why does she look like a ghost to me? <laughs> Back but to that know. phenomena of you're saying you're not on the other side and you're seeing people in this world as these ethereal ghostly figures the same way exactly. that we uh, see spiritual figures in that like manner. Exactly. So I think a lot of times we've seen shadows or shadowy looking birds as people say before they die. 
those are angels that you know you you just not and i've learned one thing if you get close enough to them they come into view but from a, di a little bit of a distance they're shadowy so I, I realized she's not coming to help me so i thought i pulled myself back together just before i hit the floor and then i stand back up and i i'm so mad i put my hands on my hips i didn't realize that i had actually dropped my body i guess somehow i managed to pull myself together but I dropped it in the wheelchair behind me because somehow I got there. And so I'm standing there having no idea that I've died, you know, having no idea what's going on, but everything goes silent, a peaceful, beautiful silent that I've never experienced before. And I'm so confused. I mean, when you die, it's very confusing. And this is why it's so important that you know God, that you know Jesus, because who's coming to get you? You cannot move on your own steam. I you know people think they're moving around and floating around. They're not. Angels or demons are lifting them. One or the other. Either God's angels are coming to get you or the devil's demons are coming to get you. Because you're standing there like a newborn baby. You can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And so I stand there and, and I just say, I don't care if the x-ray tech thinks I've lost my mind. I'm going to do what I've never done for. I'm going to call on God out loud, you know, because I'm kind of modest, you know, but I just throw my hands on my hips like it, you know, standing there and I'm like, God, you have to come help me. This is crazy. I don't know what I'm dealing with. But I didn't realize the pain was gone. You know, I had no pain. I felt fabulous, actually. I, I felt energetic. That's why I'm screaming, you know. But then I realized, okay, I can't scream at God. Okay, so I'm like, uh, but of course he can take it, you know, but I, I finally said, okay, I got to calm down. So I calmed down. I said, okay, God, I can't do anything. You know, when we cross the other side, you can't do anything. You're waiting. I said, all I can do is wait on you. And I, and I said, God, I need you to talk to me. Tell me what's going on. I didn't know I died. You know, so I'm like, I expected to hear his voice. I'd never heard his voice before. But I thought, this is such a dire situation. I need you to talk to me, God. You know, and and I expected him to do it. So I was waiting for his voice with my hands on my hips. You know, just waiting in the silence. And then all of a sudden, I felt the barometric pressure of the room got very heavy. And I'm kind of startled. And and then I realized invisibly standing in front of me, it's when your, your spirit, your soul you have a sixth sense about the spirit world. You know things that you wouldn't know in your body. It's like mm -hmm. our body's like a, a shell, like aluminum foil that stops the signal, you know, <laughs> is the best I can say. But now I'm out of the aluminum foil, so I'm standing there. And I, I know that somebody's in front of me from heaven. And so now I know it was the Holy Spirit. So he so I'm comforted now because I realize. God's here. He's not going to leave me in this trouble. He's here to answer me. And then I, I put my hands out. Both of them. This one is now paralyzed. So I, so excuse this. Yeah, the devil tried to get me one last time. <laughs> so before I could tell my story. So I have to pray for you uh, yeah. at the end of this. So <laughs> yes, I figured that's just an aside. So you are in this place now where... Yeah you are in uh the afterlife in a place where you would you call it uh maybe what you know paul talked about the third heaven the second heaven or what what space do you think you're in at this oh point? i know where i was i know where i was i was still in the x-ray room okay i was still in the x-ray room and my body's behind me in the wheelchair i didn't know it was the x-ray tech is still frozen still looking like a ghost I can still see everything in the x-ray room, even though it's kind of darkish, you know, and, and I'm, I'm standing there. She can't see me, but I can see her, you know, and, um, she's obviously all she saw was me fall. You know, that's probably the last thing she saw. And, and, and she's frozen in time, you know? So, um, so anyway, I put my hands in the, in the Holy Spirit's hands and he comforts me, you know, and, Really, it's, it, you know, it's amazing. When you tell your story, you go right back there, don't you? 
I mean, you do every time. Uh, the, the emotional every aspect time. of this. Um, just, I'm going to ask a question because I think I I know the answer, having met the Holy Spirit. But there might be a question in our audience as to what the Holy Spirit looked like. We talk about the phenomena of spirits looking like the real people we would see on earth in the afterlife and vice versa. So explain the Holy Spirit. Well, I'll tell you, I will tell you in a, in a little bit because I saw him with my eyes when the angel brought me back. But at this moment, he was staying invisible to me. Mm -hmm. I could only feel him. I knew who I knew it was a presence from heaven. You know, I didn't know if it's God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, an angel. I didn't know. But now I know it was the Holy Spirit. You mm -hmm. know, and so, but I would see him later and I could tell you exactly what he looked like as best I could see him with a, a hood over his head. You mm -hmm. know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm contending with the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm saying, you know, I thought, I'm trying to use logic. I'm like, I, I, I thought, what is this I'm dealing with? I thought childbirth was the worst thing a woman have to go through. This was worse. What do I do if it comes back? Because I'm like, I think it'll kill me if it comes back. You know, not realizing what he did. He's probably laughing, you know. And then all of a sudden, it's like his hand went up. It's like I realized his hand went up and it went boom. And I went back. A light went through me. I, and I had spiritual knowledge. It was amazing. And I was like, oh my goodness, I died, didn't I? I'm like, I'm talking to him like, that's dying, you know. Oh my goodness, that's dying. It's that simple. Oh my gosh. You know, I was just amazed. I was amazed. I was elated. Really, I was. Because I knew I was a child of God because of Jesus. I had no fear. Well, now I had no fear. Now that I knew I was on the other side. And, I, and I, I looked at the x-ray tech and I wanted to talk to him and say, hey, hey, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm standing right here, I'm going to heaven, see ya. <laughs> but but she still frozen in time, like a ghost. And, and so I'm standing there and I go, oh my gosh. And then I, my soul knew what to do. Now, we don't think we know what to do, but my soul knew what to do. And I took my right hand and I, I swung it around the room as if I'm pointing and searching for something, and then my right finger points at a particular spot just left of the x-ray machine, and I I yell, I'm coming home! And I didn't know I knew how to do that, but right where I pointed, the room split from ceiling to floor, and the split fold back like teepee. And through the split, came this beautiful cobalt looking light and multiple powerful masculine angel the forearms of angels with their hands reaching down reaching for me into the room it was beautiful and the instant i saw their hands and they kept their bodies hidden behind the veil but just their hands coming through that slit and i was like oh my gosh I, I instantly started calling them guys. I'm like, guys, <laughs> because it's weird. It's like your soul knows who they are. And I felt like the one that was closest, I knew him very well. But yet my earthly mind is still trying to catch up to what my soul knows, you know. Our earthly mind is so logical, you know. But our, but our soul knows things that we don't know. Like I knew these angels. They're like brothers to me, you know to my soul. I was like, guys, guys, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> like I, I need a minute to think, you know, because <laughs> so you had this familiarity, obviously with these angels yeah. now yeah. who, uh, were, were large, very large. Uh, yeah. I, I would say that there were at least about men, seven, you said. seven feet tall behind the veil seven by the feet tall. By the look of their hands, they had to be. Very masculine, like Da Vinci painting hands. I mean, and forearms. I mean, muscular. I mean, when people say they don't have genders, they do. I've seen that. You know, they are male. They are all male. They're the ones that I saw. You know, but um, from their from their arms, and and so I they just stood there very patiently, waiting with their hands out, 
probably wondering what is wrong with her. You know, she she looked, she called for us, and now we're here. Now she's hesitating. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, no, wait a minute. I asked God to let me live, and now I'm getting ready to go. Um, and I wanted to go because I felt such love. I felt such familiarity, like a brotherhood. You know, it's so beautiful. Like, you know, the angels love us, and our soul loves them. You know, we... We're all God's children. He created them. He created us, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they're here to help me. They're here to rescue me. How fabulous. Isn't it interesting that God would send angels to get us, you know? He gives us that job. He can just snatch us up. But anyway, they're there in the x-ray room. And so I look around the x-ray room because my, my training kicks in to observe with accuracy. And I'm seeing, oh, my gosh. I'm like, the colors in here where we are are dull. The colors coming through there, the skin, the vibrancy of their skin is so vibrant. I'm like, hey, guys, so that's the real world you're in. I've been living in the created world. It's never quite as vivid as mm. the original isn't, you know. And so I just made a few notations about that. And so I finally said, okay, I'm ready to go. I told him. And then when I said that, the, the angel closest to me, who I felt familiarity with, he said from behind the veil, turn to your right and don't look at us as we enter the room. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, uh, this is all new to me, but I'm excited. You know, I'm going to have it. So I turned to my right and, and the angels all fall in behind me. I can feel them. I can sense them out of the veil. They're like a lot of them, you know, I, I don't know how many, but I feel their tall presence behind me. You feel, you just feel it in your soul. And, uh, and then I, and then the angel says to me, the same angel, and he's the only angel who ever spoke to me. He, he took the lead at this point. As I, once I pointed, he took the lead and he said to me from behind, now Gail. And I'm like, see, he knows me. All right. He goes, now Gail, you know that if you look at us, you won't be allowed to come back. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. He said, I know. Do I know that? You know, maybe my soul knew it, but my mind didn't know it. I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever you say, right? I won't look. So he steps up very close behind me, and both of my arms go out. I know to put them out, um, both of my arms, you know, like, like you're in the position of a cross, which is interesting, isn't it? And so many people tell me the life after death experience and they say, I don't know, I floated. And I said, why are you holding your arms out? And they go, I, I don't know, but I always hold my arms out when I'm telling my experience. I'm like, that's because angels were holding you from behind, you know? Um, and, but most people aren't aware of it, but because of this conversation, I was aware that they were there, you know? So I held my arms out and he stepped up behind me. And now I know it was him who did that. And he held, took my arms in my hand because remember I did not have my body with me. I had no tactile feelings, which is very interesting, but you don't realize you don't have them because everything seems normal. But if you think about it afterwards, you realize, yeah, I couldn't tell if it's holding my hands or my under my elbows, but you know, being seven feet tall, he could certainly hold. I'm five foot four. So, you know, hold me pretty. So he held me like this. Then we all turned towards the opening from which they come and we start and I'm lifted a few inches off the floor being held like this co continuously the whole time from now on and with him behind me and all the angels behind us we go into the opening where they come and we start rising up towards the ceiling and and we kind of turn and face the room while we're rising and I'm like hey hey wait a minute as we get towards the ceiling I'm like hey Guys, listen, can we stop for just a second so I can look back and see if I can see my body? Yeah, because you, you hear about people seeing their bodies. I say, I want to see if it's true what they say. So we stop and um, and they they let us stop. And I look back and I see my body slumped in a wheelchair. And I, I said, hold it. it looks like I'm smiling. And it really looked like I was smiling laying there. Mm -hmm. And then they said nothing, no answer. You know, it's like, okay, she's... You know, she's excited, you know, and then I said, okay, I'm ready to go. And so we going up through the, through the X, through the X-ray room, through the ceiling, through the structure of, 
of the hospital. Then we're out in the night air above the hospital. I see the tall Virginia pines. It's it's about it's in the wee hours of the morning. It's dark, very dark. It's still nighttime, and so I realized that we started heading left and left and left about at tree height, you know, up at the trees, and and we're heading towards the spot where George Washington won America's independence right over Yorktown, which I happen to have prayed a, a day before and asking Jesus to forgive my sins, not knowing that I was going to die. The Holy Spirit had prompted me. Isn't he wonderful? You know, he, if you belong to him, he takes care of you. So there was then Gail, this window, if you will, uh, that where you were, see, were seeing the spot in the, uh, the square, which uh, was at that time, I believe, the capital where George Washington took his oath of office yes. as the first president of the United States. So, so a window had been opened while you're with the angel who has told you at this point, if you look at, at, at his face, you could not return. If I look at the angels, I could not return. Right. And you were seeing at this window open to, to this place in New York City. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God's the one who took me there. So I'll, I'll try to speed it up a little bit. You know, I have all the details on my, on my um, videos because being an engineer, I feel like I can't leave out one detail, but I need to kind of speed it up. So I will. So we head to the left over the spot where George Washington won America's independence, where he beat the British in Yorktown. So mm -hmm. we head over that way. And then we start heading towards the Atlantic Ocean. And then and then we start going upwards, you know, faster. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And this is like it's it's more real than anything you've ever experienced. I mean, you're there. You're you're on the other side, you're traveling away from the earth. So we're going up, stars are everywhere, magnificently beautiful. I look up and I see what I thought was the moon, you know. It's all I can say is a round light, which I, 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 I said to the angels, I said, you know, so this is why people think it's a tunnel. You know, you're, you're leaving Earth, the darkest of space, and there's a round light up there. I'm assuming it's the moon, and, and you would think that's the end of the tunnel. And, you know, I, I didn't know if I was right or wrong, but just my observation at the time, I kind of felt them chuckle, you know, kind of. I felt levity behind me, you know, like they, they found it interesting, my constant chattering, but I was so excited. So we go up and we pass that light and then we start speeding to the left, speeding to the left very fast. All of us, you know, the, the angels holding me, the angels behind us, we're speeding and I'm like looking at the stars just sweeping by. It's magnificent. And I never look back down at the earth. You know, because I'm too busy looking at it, what I'm seeing, you know. And so as we're going, I start thinking, oh, my goodness, wait a minute. I feel I feel weightless. I feel, uh, what if we turn into some kind of scary ghost, you know, like the x-ray tape? I was like, oh, no, did I make a mistake? You know, leaving should I have stayed with my body? You know, I, you know, like you see in the movies, you see these horrible things, right? As ghosts. I was like, what if I'm really frightening looking right now so I, I called out the angel holding me and said hey hey wait a minute what do i look like now you know because i was <laughs> i was scared you know it's so, kind of like lois lane flying with superman at this point what no kidding it's exactly right <laughs> you're right and and you're and I, I was determined to observe everything i could observe because i was determined to come back you remember so i, I was going to go as far as i could go and get back in time but I, I but then i was getting scared do i look like some kind of ghost. Yeah, it was exactly like flying with Superman, but standing up, you know, in the cross <laughs> position. Very interesting. So, um, so all of a sudden, as soon as I said that, it was so touching to me. This gold-like mirror showed up in front of in front of me, moving with us. The edges were smoky. I could see my own reflection. It was like lit with gold. It was like a full-length mirror like mirror like object is all i can say and it's floating through space stars are going by behind us you know and it's right in front of me uh about two feet in front of me and it's cut off right here i can see my arms are outstretched you know and but i can't see the angels you know i can just see me because it's like they're 
though they're so big, you know, their head would have been, you know, so anyway, um, so I'm just seeing me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm still me, but I'm a perfect me. Oh my gosh. You know, God is so great. And they, Jesus gives you everything. I mean, I was like, Hey guys, I never looked this good on earth. Okay. You know, like, it was, <laughs> so I was you're like, seeing your reflection in the yeah. mirror and yeah. all of a sudden you've been made into this perfect, uh, it's image of, of what you would like to have been that God had fashioned you as. As, as I think we would have been if there wasn't sin in the world, right? Once sin is removed. And is, isn't it interesting that your soul looks like your body, but it looks better? <laughs> you know, so, uh, but really, I was like, I, I can't believe I had my hair was long and dark as it was not then. And my eyes the same color, you know, and, and I had on a white robe. And it was interesting because I thought, man, I didn't even think about what I'm wearing, you know, um, you know, because my body was left back there. Right. Uh, didn't even think about that. But here I was wearing a white robe, brown neck, a quarter sleeves just below my knees like it was fitted to me. I could see no seams. You know, I'm a detail person and it looked to me like some kind of loosely woven linen, but it was white. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, for the white robe. Right. I mean, wash us clean. I was just so happy. Oh, wait a minute. So I said, oh, my goodness. I said to the angel, because I was like, this is so touching. You know, angels always say, fear not, fear not. So as soon as a fear would come up, boom, you know, you would do everything to solve it. I was like, thank you for doing that. I'm okay now. And, and <laughs> as soon as I said thank you, that thing just shattered, you know, and just drifted off into the space out in front of us, into the stars. And so we kept heading left. Do you want me to keep going? Please do. Please do. I'm I'm just absolutely mesmerized by your story. So you're in this space now on this journey, and you're going all the way at this point. I didn't know uh, I was. Into heaven or at the gates of heaven. So take us take us there. What, okay. uh, what happened next? Okay. What happened next is we're still flying left. I'm still seeing stars. Then suddenly I see. Now I think I'm coming back. I think I'm just taking a little excursion with the angels, right? And I'm coming back. Um, because I had, you know, told told the angels in the beginning, I forgot to say, I got a deal, guys. I'll come with you for a little while, you know, just to get over this pain, get my strength, and then you bring me back. So, and I tell people what I saw. You know, that, that was my deal with them. So I thought they were going to live by that. But they had other plans. <laughs> or God had other plans, you know. Uh, so we're heading to the left and all of a sudden I see the daylight mark coming by, you know, like when you're flying in a plane, you, you've seen that before, I'm sure. And, um, uh, and it's coming over and we're heading into daylight and it's the most beautiful azure sky I have ever seen in my life in front of me. I'm looking at it, not a cloud in it. It's so vast. I'm like azure, you know, not blue, not green, not, not purple azure. That's all I can describe. Uh, you know, I'm an artist too. So, it was pure azure, just stunning. And then we're heading towards this light that I thought was heaven. You know, earthly mind would think that. And and I can just see it out of the corner of my eye because I don't dare turn left or right because I don't want to see that angel holding me, right? Because then I couldn't come back. So I, I can see it out of the corner of my eye, this light. And I'm like, is that heaven? You know, the, or is that heaven? And, uh, and it doesn't answer me. You know, they're so, they're so proper, you know, <laughs> they only give you a minimal amount of information. So, um, and, and so we're going towards it and then I feel a warmth coming from it. And then all of a sudden, before we get to it, we shoot straight up as if we're going through a window, you know, or something. We sh shoot straight up into the second atmosphere above heaven. Fast, very fast. And it's like a murky gray. A and, but we didn't stay there long. I, I don't know if the second heaven is where Satan and his guys are. I don't know. But we didn't stay there long. Mm -hmm. And so I'd been in the first heaven with the stars. Second heaven now. We're, we're shooting up to it. It's gray. And I sense a kind of light coming from the angels. Otherwise, it's kind of dark. And then we shoot up again. Now, this is the third heaven. We're up in. It's pitch black. There's no stars. It's above the stars. You know? 
pitch black. But I'm being held with angels. I'm not afraid. And, uh, and But we're going to the left. We're always going to the left. And so we're speeding to the left. And then I see in the distance out of the corner of my another golden light up and in the distance. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I know that's heaven. It's heaven. You know, and as we're coming closer, the atmosphere starts lighting with beautiful colors, you know. And we're just zooming to the left. And I'm like, I'm euphoric. You know, you can't help it. You get close to heaven, you're euphoric. And I'm thinking, what a blessing. I got to see the journey here, right? A lot of people wake up in heaven or hell. Don't know how they got there. God allowed me to see the journey. It's amazing. So the the beautiful colors are coming in. It's like a it's like a sunrise color, light in the atmosphere. You know, it's purples and violets and pinks and it's fabulous. And it's like an artist's dream, you know. And then he starts speeding me to the left. I'm like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then I start thinking, oh, wait, I'm supposed to go back, but I don't want to go back. But I want, but I need to go back. <laughs> you know, I'm torn. <laughs> and so I'm like, and the angels just speeding me. We are speeding at breakneck speed at towards heaven. And I'm like, and so I didn't want to do it. I, because I wanted to keep going. But I said, stop. I have to go back. And so I thought, surely he's going to, you know, stop. He didn't stop. He, <laughs> he kept going and then quickly set me down to stand on something. And I don't know what I'm standing on. I'm looking at the beautiful atmosphere. There's shooting stars. There's, there's shooting stars everywhere. Uh, these big beams of white light at, going back to golden light just streaming in front of me. It's vast 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 atmosphere and the golden light of heaven is right there and it's like fire made of light that doesn't burn i mean fire doesn't burn you know god is holy fire and when you have your sins erased it doesn't burn you you know mm -hmm. that's the beauty of jesus right so i mean because we always think of fire as being bad right but no heaven was shrouded in this beautiful fire the light i mean it was like I could feel its warmth, you know, even though I didn't have my body, I, I sensed its warmth. And so I knew I was standing near the gates of heaven. To me, it looked like about 100 yards on my left. And, you know, from the corner of my eye, because I didn't dare look at it. And, and then my arms went down and the angels and the angels holding me all stepped behind me. And, and I sensed them back away. And I'm standing there and, and the angel says to me again, he speaks and he goes, wait here don't turn around i'm like what what wait here don't turn around so i'm waiting there i'm thinking i'm by myself and and i'm waiting there and i'm looking at the beautiful atmosphere and they go into heaven's light i know that they go to my left and now you know my videos reverse because i don't know how to at first zoom meeting i ever did i don't know how to reverse it so it was my left if i'm pointing you know, right. But they go off to my left into heaven's light behind me. And I'm standing there. I go, well, if this is the most beautiful waiting room anybody ever waited in. I thought they just had to go in and get it from the check from God. Yeah, you can take her back. Okay, take her back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I thought. They had to get, you know, God to tell them. So I'm standing there. I'm just so elated. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've come this far. I get to go back and tell people. That it's real. Heaven's real. The angels are real. God and Jesus are real. Uh, life after death is real. Jesus is the way to heaven. You know, the only way to heaven. And it's and if a sinner like me can get there, so can you. You know what I mean? No reason to go to hell. So I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm going to burn this into my memory, this scene. Just like I was taught to do in a shipyard. I'm going to burn it into my memory. And hope to pray that God will let me... Take the memories back so I can tell people what it looked like outside the gates of heaven. Like I said, there's shooting stars. There's, there's beautiful co sunrise colors. There's, and so I'm standing there, and I start to wonder, hey, what am I standing on out here in this atmosphere? You know, I, I'm standing on something solid. And so I look down, and I see my bare feet. By the way, I, I noticed when my... I saw myself that I was wearing, I had bare feet. I never liked to go barefooted, but it seemed normal. For some reason, I was barefooted. You know, an interesting thing about God is Moses, take your sandals off, right? I, 
it was something about being barefooted that he liked. So I'm barefooted. I look down. I'm standing on the edge of glass. Mm. It's like a glass road. I'm like, oh my goodness. I have to look behind me now. I have to look and see if there's more glass. I, I want to know, is this the, the glass road to heaven? And you know, now, now I know that God's throne room was probably behind that, that because glass is his floor, you know, uh, oh, glass is a lot about glass, you know, and Moses saw God and he said under his foot was uh, a pavement like sapphire, which is clear like glass. So yeah. I, I learned that afterwards, you know, so, so I'm standing there and, and I go, oh man, I can't believe I'm going to disobey the angel. Yeah, I mean, but I'm like, I'm doing it for people on earth, right? What are they going to do to me? I'm God's child. I mean, I'm in heaven. What are they going to do? Punish me? <laughs> you, know, so, so well, like, you thought you had had to bring back a message I did. Uh, to people at that point. You thought you were basically done and you were coming I thought back. it was done. But oh, I thought it was that done. wasn't God's plan for you. I was just beginning. Oh my gosh! But I thought I was done. I thought, this is enough. Like, done. Uh, you can send me back now. You know. So I, I look. I look. I see the glass, and so I go. Okay, the angels aren't behind me, so I can't get in trouble for looking at them. So I knew they were gone. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna look behind. Me. So I'm gonna glance real quick. I'm not gonna look at heaven. I was gonna glance. So I glance real quick, and I, and I was stunned. I was like, oh my gosh! Seeing it behind me to my from my left. All the way into heaven's like was a line of people, beautiful people that looked like they were in their 25 to 30, same age I looked as we all are forever in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, men and women, obviously humans, you know, I, I assume they're my past relatives. I didn't know. And, uh, and they all were wearing white robes like mine, only their white robes had a hood on the back that came slightly up on their their head, which is very strange. I didn't know if mine did because I never saw the back of me, right? But um, but men and women. And I, I was like, oh my goodness, how have you been here so silent? I didn't even know you were here. Uh, who are you? You know, I'm, I'm talking in telepathy because once you're on the other side, you don't realize you're talking in telepathy, which means you get the, the intent, you know, you understand. You know, and so, but they wouldn't answer me and they wouldn't even look at me. They were looking out in the atmosphere like I was supposed to be doing. And I was like flabbergasted. And all of a sudden, the one closest to me does this strange thing. I'm looking at him. I didn't know at the time it was a man or woman once he slid up in age. As if, and I learned since that in heaven, people can slide up and down in their ages. A woman said, a life after death, that she saw Moses and and David running around playing as teenagers. And the angel said, do you know who that is? And she said, no. She, she, he said, that's Moses and David. You know, so you can hmm. slide up and down in your age. You know, I thought that's fascinating. This guy had slid up his age to be very old, so I'd recognize him. And I, I was just stunned. All, and, and he looked very upset and he had gray kind of wiry hair you know kind of down here and and I I, I was stunned I, and he had he had gray blue eyes is the best I can describe like I'd never seen before although now I have a nephew who has gray eyes which is very rare and uh, and George Washington of course had gray blue eyes I know now but he's looking at me and I don't even know who he is uh, but 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 I think he's upset, maybe because I'm turned around, you know. But now I know why he was upset and why he was upset. So I turn around and 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 look back out and say, I'm not going to disobey again. Well, now I know. Now I know, and I'll explain later that that was George Washington, because my family from Fredericksburg, Virginia, is related to George Washington through his sister, Betty, mm. and. Uh, uh, you know, my grandmother always told us the lineage and everything, and and you know, he was from Fredericksburg, basically. And um, so, at the front of the line of my past relatives was George Washington. 
and he was looking upset. And I, I was clueless at the time. So I turned back around. And so all of a sudden I feel all these, I, I'm, I say, I'm not going to disobey again at all. I'm not going to do anything wrong because I've got to go back. Right. So uh, to tell people, so all of a sudden I feel warrior angels, the presence of warrior angels come out. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I in trouble? I mean, hmm. uh, is it wrong to ask to go back? Uh, maybe I'm in trouble. You know, maybe I'm, maybe I shouldn't ask to go back when you've been this far, you know, I was clueless. And, and then all of a sudden I feel the presence of my angels come out. So we got my relatives, warrior angels, my angels are coming out. And then I know in the middle of my angels is God and Jesus walking down the glass road out of heaven towards me. And I'm, I don't turn to look. I'm not, I'm like, Oh my gosh, God didn't have to do this. All I had to do was give the word, right? Why is he doing this? Hmm. And, and, but I'm so excited because you're so happy. You know, it's like your daddy, you know, your father you know, and Jesus. The only reason you're there, your savior. Oh my gosh, like your family. And, and so God comes and stands right behind me, right behind me. Jesus is standing right on his right with his arms crossed because I can see from the corner of my eye. His arms are crossed at about my eye level, which being at my my height, that means Jesus is about six foot tall, you know. And so his arms are crossed. And I'm like, oh, uh, I guess I'm not going back, you know. <laughs> but, and then God says, and it's so beautiful. He talks to me and his voice, you know it when you hear it. You're, you know it. It's hardwired into us to know God's voice. Mm -hmm. God, the Father, says to me in this baritone, beautiful masculine voice, Daughter, why go back? Stay here where you're loved and saved. It was it the intent where you're loved and saved. Stay here. you know. And I'm like, and I'm just so touched. But I start talking to him. I start, I'm like, you know, when Abraham said, you know, to, to God, Hey, if there's only 12 people in there, if there's only, if there's only 10 people, can we go down to, if there's only five people, you know, <laughs> and, and can you not destroy Sodom? So I start bargaining with God. I'm like, Hey God, look, um, uh, if I, if I go back and I tell people they'll believe that if somebody has been here this far and they go back, they'll believe. And he says, and he says it again. He warns me again. And then he says, daughter, let me show you something first. And I'm like, God's going to show me something. And all of a sudden, my angel comes up behind me. My arms go out. And I don't know if the other people were lifted by angels. But all of a sudden, all of us in the same position, me, the angel behind me holding me, my other angels, the warrior angels. I mean, but God is directly behind the angel holding me because the angel is between him and me. And Jesus still on the right and all the people we all start going forward and downward at breakneck speed like creation is just going boom boom past us i mean when god's at the helm you don't go slowly you go fast so it's like boom we're going we're going through creation and then all of a sudden i see in front of me dark clouds well they're really parting beneath our feet, basically, as we're going in towards one another the earth. Dark clouds are parting. Clouds like I, I've never seen before. They're wispy, but they're parting. And and then we come in, and I see just the curvature of the earth. And it's black. And I know I, I know that, that it's earth. You know, there's no lights on it. There's no anything, you know. And, and so all of a sudden, we start going through the earth at breakneck speed and we're going through dirt and, and it's like an IMAX theater dirt with worms crawling through it and and I'm stunned I'm not afraid because I'm with the creator of the universe he happens to be my father you know uh, and Jesus you know and angels what's going to be afraid of and, and 
but these worms, you know, from my calculation, from my site, looked like they were about. I don't, I don't know what kind of worms they were. They, they, earth, they weren't really earthworms. I can't say what they were. There must be significance to them. I don't know. They're kind of fleshy looking, brownish looking, but, but they didn't have the ridges like earthworms. But they, uh, they looked to be about two foot in diameter, about six feet long. You know, I didn't know if we had shrunk or if they were just really big. But we're going through the earth and we're going through the dirt with all these worms everywhere. everywhere. And I've, and I say to the angel, what in the world is this, right? And everybody is saw it like they're used to it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is wild, you know. And so, all of a sudden, we pop out on the surface of the earth, and it's early morning daylight, and we're standing and we're hovering across from a busy city sidewalk. There's a street in front of us, sidewalk, and there's people on the street, and God has frozen them in place. And now I see them as shadows, you know. But in their shadows, I can see that they have silver running through them. But the silver in the shape of their bodies, in the shape of their silhouettes. And I know it's their soul, but the silver is dull in all of them. And we can hear their thoughts. And their thoughts are, I got to hurry. I got to get hit there. I got to get there. Their thoughts are so loud. God hears all of our, the spirit world hears our thoughts. They come out of the top of our head. So interesting. I, It was so loud. Everybody was in a hurry. And now I took the moment, since I'm engineering background, I'm studying the structures. I'm like, I'm going to find this place again. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to find it. So I'm studying the buildings, and I, I notice the windows are tall and arched. and So I, I take note of the buildings, very strong note of where they are, without looking directly left, directly right. And I burn it into my memory. But then I realize everybody's mind is on the people. And I'm like, and God starts pacing back and forth behind me. And I can feel his big, powerful steps. And I'm like, oh my gosh, God's mad. And and God, I, I know he's pointing at people while he's pacing. And he goes, see, his exact words, I'll never forget him. See, I created people to have a relationship with me. They don't talk to me. They don't even think about me. And I was crushed for him. You know, like, oh my gosh, all God asked for is a relationship. He didn't tell me, look at their sins, you know. I mean. Because God will straighten out. He'll take it from there if you just talk to him, right? Spend time with him. Oh, my gosh. And everybody's ignoring him. And he's right in front of them. They don't even know it. And his heart is broken over that. And he's and he's furious. I thought he's going to destroy them. He's that mad. And righteous indignation, you know, of a just God. It's like, hey, these people, they ignore me. I was wondering. Who are these people? So I, I tell the angel, oh, my goodness, let me go warn them. I have no idea who they are. And and so I go and see the silhouettes. So he takes me, and we start floating towards one woman who just passed by a mailbox on the sidewalk. And she's a pretty woman. Her hair is flipped. I think she's a model. She's wearing a mini skirt. You know, she's about to cross the street just past the mailbox. And she's looking at her watch, and she's thinking, I got to get to my hairdresser. I'm going to be late. You know, everybody's rushing. And as, as we come in closer, uh, when I'm about this far from her face, about a foot from her face, her details become clear. And that's why I could see what she looked like. And, and I start yelling, and I said, hey, hey, none of that matters. I'm using my mouth for the first time during all this. I'm using my voice. And I'm saying, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you get here with God when your life is over. That's the only thing that matters. And the, and the only thing that matters is that you talk to God. Spend time with God. Just have a relationship with God. Just talk to God. It's the only thing that matters. And I, I'm screaming. She can't hear me. And I'm mm -hmm. so upset. So I tell I tell the angel, I have to warn the rest of them. So he turns me. So I'm now I'm coming closer to the rest of the crowd. On this side, they're, they're 
images clear up and I realized they're Americans. I recognize them. They're Americans. My fellow Americans. I'm crushed. You know, I'm crushed because I thought America loved God. It's 1981, right? I'm stunned and that God was pointing out that most Americans are ignoring him. 1981, excuse me. Um, 1981 was a period uh, that, uh, to put it in context, uh, Ronald Reagan had had become president, and he was followed by uh, George Bush Sr. So this was a period of time when, when we thought of America as one nation under God, but today, as we're taping this, this country has even migrated or devolved, oh. if you will, even further away from God than it was oh, yeah. at the time that you were exposed in 1981 with the angels by your side or with you, with God the Father with you, having traversed through uh, the earth into this place, and you're, you're still not fully aware of where you are. You have the mailbox you see you know this is an American with the same same accent, if you will, that, that you yeah. have, but yeah. but still still you're figuring out where you are. Right. I'm trying to figure out where I am, but my number one goal is to get these people to hear me. But you know, when you're on the other side, God does talk about don't talk to the dead, right? Mm -hmm. They can't hear you. Now I'm determined. I have to go back so I can, so they can hear me. So my fellow Americans can hear me because I yelled to people on the street, nothing else matters. Oh my goodness. Just talk to God. He's right in front of you. Give your life to Jesus, you know, just so you can get to heaven when your life is over, but have a relationship with God. It's all he's asking you for. He'll take it from there. They couldn't hear me. So now I'm like, oh my gosh, my fellow Americans, I've got to, I've got to go back. So I told the angel, take me back. I mean, in front of my physician, in front of God, as soon as we float backwards, as soon as we hit that spot right in front of God, we all zoom backwards back to heaven and the exact opposite. We came breakneck speed. And then all of a sudden, wow, we're up on the glass road again in the exact same position. God's behind me. Jesus is right here with his arms crossed. Um, all the people, all the angels. And, and so the angel step, my, steps back behind me and my arms go down to my side again. They physically go down to my side. So I'm standing there looking out. Just my mind's reeling. I'm so hurt. Yeah. That my own people, George Washington watched that. He watched God's fury. He knew it was coming. That's why he was upset when we were in heaven. He knew. And, you know, I'm sure he was thinking, and you're going to go back and warn him? <laughs> you know, could we, could we have a soldier, please? You know, probably yeah. thinking. You know, but, but, man, I felt like a soldier. You know, when you have your sins lifted off of you, you feel like a warrior. Like you can mm -hmm. tackle the world. So I'm standing there, and I'm, I'm just crushed. And I'm thinking, I've got to go back. I've got to talk God and let me go back. And so I'm standing there. And then all of a sudden, God moves. I feel a move. And he's standing beside me. And I'm like, what is going on? And he takes my shoulder and he turns me face to face with him. I'm standing face to face with him. But an arm's length from my face. Hmm. He's lowered himself through the glass. You know, because he's obviously about six foot tall. Big, strong man, you know, very muscular, very, I mean, now I sent you a picture of what he looked like. Can, do yes, you well, have, we'll place that on the screen so people are watching that now. With, I, because I can tell you, I found a guy after 42 years, a guy pops up, four people suddenly, and when it's God's timing to tell it, he has four people pop up on the world stage 
across the world. I never heard of them. And as soon as I see them, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy is a spitting image of God. Hmm. Uh, which is shocking. The voice, the body, the... Now, I don't know about his profile. I never saw God's profile because he never turned. He was facing me the whole time. But everything else, the spitting image of God. You know, hmm. and then I... Then you'll find out later. I see someone else who looks like different ones, but if you if you can pull up the picture of God of me looking at it in His face, I'm telling everyone this. I would not lie about this with God as my witness. I gotta face Him again. Do you think I would lie about this when all of you are gonna see Him face to face? I don't want you laughing at me for eternity. I'm giving you the best image of a man because God made man His own image. And I think he's had someone in every generation that looks like him, and people don't know it. But if you could pull it up, I'd love for people to see what I saw. Yeah. So we're we're looking at that now. So. Oh, you are. Uh, tell us now. The so you are with God face to face at right. this point, having yeah. seen this individual at this mailbox. And you are back in heaven. Right. George Washington, you had seen with a downturned head, looking down yeah. with the full knowledge that the United States of America, that he fought to, to uh, found uh, as the as really the father, we think of him, as of uh, America. He was yeah. our first pre president reluctantly. He was uh, drafted to be the first president because he did right. not. He want, they were trying to escape the monarchy. No. He did not. None of the founders wanted a monarchy. They wanted, and they ascribed to the Bible. Oh, as they did. A governing authority, uh, God Almighty. But now he had seen how far the United States had fallen away. And Should I tell there. him now? Should I tell now that I figured out where the place was after 30 please, years? Please do, yes. <clears throat> well, on Earth, 30 years later, well, 30-some years later, it wasn't that long ago, maybe 10 years ago, I, I went to New York City for the first time. Uh, now, why would God have taken me to New York? Because George Washington dedicated America to God in New York on his inauguration day. And... Jonathan Kahn, I love him, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, he says that God always gives a warning in a place where America was dedicated to him. Isn't that interesting? This was, by circumstances beyond my control, I ended up in Bryant Park. And Bryant Park is near Times Square. And I looked across the street and I said, oh, my goodness, it's the exact same building, the exact same scenario, the exact same mailbox still sitting there mm -hmm. because it's called the it, they leave them there forever because they're called relay mailboxes mm -hmm. because the, the mailman, when he doesn't have has to wait to deliver the mail, he puts his mail in, locks it, comes back later and gets it. And I say that's prophetic because this message is is being delayed, you know. 42 years to God's perfect time and to go out to America. So it was New York City. Every Everything was the same. The the arched windows, everything. I mean, I, I give the description of all that in my part four video. Uh, so it was New York City. It was the corner of Tesla Corner and the Avenue in the Americas. So I find it interesting. Tesla used to go there every day at the end of his life studying pigeons. I say he was not studying pigeons. He knew there was a portal there to heaven. He had to know. He's very intelligent. You know, he tried to give us free electricity and um, Tesla knew. So it's very interesting. So that corner right there, Tesla corner, is where God stood and then watched people. Hmm. And I would love to see the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir singing there 24 hours a day. You know, that is holy ground. People are walking in the park, have no idea. But I'm sure there's places all over the world. I mean, where God is. But I happen to know that he was there. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, same scene across the street. And anyway, so that's I, that. Well, so I have anyway. to say that, if I may interrupt, 
just yes. recently, um, yeah. Gail, that I had seen also from having those portals. A number of people have seen those portals. Yes. It's a dynamic we don't completely understand, but there is a, just as we have avenues and streets around this world on earth, there are those, those places, <coughs> those, those uh, venues, those uh, portals that are the places where the angels, God obviously in this case, traverse yeah. from heaven. And that's something that, uh, that's an, another phenomena that you said in this place was one of those repositories or endpoints, if you will, that, uh, for that portal. Right at Tesla Corner in Manhattan, uh, at Bryant Park. I know it. I, I, God was standing there. Excuse me, I'm getting a little choked up. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yep, that's very interesting that I would know the location of one on Earth, isn't it? I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it's only because my engineering background, noticing the building. And now that I stood there, I could look to my right and see the sign that says Tesla Corner Avenue of the Americas. It's right there. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the there I am. exact mailbox location that you saw when yep. you were coming from heaven to earth and seeing this woman standing by this mailbox. Yep. You went back and, and saw it after you returned to this. this I even place. took a picture of it. And it was oddly leaning as if it was leaning towards the direction the angel and I were standing. It's very interesting. And and on the window, the arched windows, now that I could see in them, because when God took me there, I was allowed to look in the windows for some reason. Now I could see on Google Earth those windows, and I forget the name. It's an art building or something, um, a very um, historical art building, that the fretwork on they have on top of the windows is mimicking the angel holding his arms outstretched. You know, so it's very interesting the way God works, the way he plans things, you know, every detail. Yeah. So I'm standing there talking to him and I'm like, okay, um, I have to go back because there's so many things I need to tell people. And one of the things, it's very hard for me to explain and it would cause a lot of controversy. And it's one of the reasons God warned me so hard is, um, that the angel was going to come back with me that God was going to allow him to you know people in the Bible have had angels living with them Paul had an angel living with him for a year Deborah I think the judge of Israel had an angel living with her and God was going to allow the angel who's carrying me to come back with me and help me you know to, to deliver this message if I came back you know and the angel I kind of agreed on that you know he was, it was like my, my guardian angel, my soulmate, really. I mean, it's another thing. That's a thing that I was determined to come back and tell America. There are soulmates in heaven. You may be married your soulmate. Maybe you didn't find your soulmate on earth. God gives you one. But Americans are losing their soulmates because I have learned that if you... If we do what Amer most Americans do, commit sexual sin, and we don't think it's sin anymore, we think it's normal to have sex with people you're not married to, to that you're dating them, it's expected. You know, it's normal. But if you do not repent of sexual sin, you lose your soulmate. It's a gift God can give you or not give you. So that would be kind of horrible. So anyway, we were going to come back which was something the devil did not like the idea that I would come back and tell all this, you know? Mm. So, uh, God warned me again, daughter, uh, wise face of me. Don't go back. Why you go back? We have a long conversation. I can't remember, but during it, I remember saying, even if only one person listens, it will be worth it for me to go back, you know? And, and I said to him, God, I think that a lot of churches today, have scared people away from you. They don't realize that you only want a relationship, that you'll take it from there. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Excuse me. And people just don't think of you as a person. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and and so as soon as I said, even if only one person listens, I'll go back. God leaned back and his face started shining. Light just beamed off of his face. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was a, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And, and I, you know, I, I have to know details. So I'm leaning in close. I'm so comfortable. We're so comfortable with our father, right? And Jesus, they're our family. Our soul knows them. I'm so comfortable. I lean in like, I've got to look at this, you know? And that's when I thought, man, they look like white mercury or something coming off, off of his face, you know, and off of his chest. And as soon as I did that, then he leaned forward again, back up. And, and while he was doing that, lightning and clouds went through his eyes. Mm. The power of God, the, the power of God displayed before me. Mm. No, Anybody who thinks they're going to go against God is a fool. Okay? <laughs> I mean, uh, master of the universe. And, uh, um, but when his face shines upon you, you know, Solomon said, when God's face shines, when a king's face shines, it means life. And, you know, there's the, the verse, may God's face shine upon you, may he grant you peace. And right. it was just a blessing, you know. And his face shined upon me, and he stood up, and I looked at him, I was like, now what you know i'm thinking now what and then he didn't say anything i expected him to talk to me further that's like the ultimate engineer minimal amount of instruction <laughs> you know i say it <laughs> once uh, you know you better you ought to listen you ought to listen to his advice but i'm i'm so stubborn right i'm determined to be happy. and so he just steps back behind me and when he steps back behind me i notice step back facing facing the atmosphere and when i i do that uh i feel god and jesus go back into heaven i i think they talked i think they talked to the angels i couldn't hear the conversation i was only allowed to hear what god said to me so they they go back into heaven i feel the warrior angels go back i feel all the people go back and i feel just my angels there and my angel stepped up close behind me again and and I'm like, okay, this is amazing. He's letting me go back. So I hold up my arms. The angel takes me again. We all lift up off the glass wall. We start zooming back exactly the way we'd come. And, and it's like very fast now. Like they're speeding to get me back to my body. Everything's in reverse. But I do notice the azure sky as we're flying through it because it's so bright you can't miss it you know so i notice the azure sky again as we're going now to the right through it and in front of us strangely enough there is a floating basket i don't know what the meaning is but it's floating along with us through the azure sky it's a basket that looks like it's made out of dark twigs it's a rough but it's beautiful but it's floating I, don't, I have no idea what the meaning is i'm sure there's a meaning hmm. but i'm looking at this basket floating i'm like this is amazing what does that mean uh i couldn't see the side of it couldn't see what was in it so and then all of a sudden we're we're coming into the x-ray room we just break next speed and it's starting to be daylight you know the dawn's breaking so we're coming in through the opening for which they came I'm looking at the wheelchair ahead of me. My body's not there. I'm like, oh my goodness, my body's not there. Hmm. I, I, and But the angel knew where it was. They had moved it onto a table around the corner. So he, he swings me around and we go, and I'm looking at my body laying there. And at the end of my body near my feet is standing the Holy Spirit. Hmm. He's standing there guarding my body. Isn't that, you know, hmm. people talk about, you know, they do transcendental meditation, you know, how dangerous that is because you're leaving your body. Something else can get in it, a bad spirit. The Holy Spirit was protecting my body oh, while my I was God. gone. It's so touching. So I, I look at him and I'm like, oh, my goodness. And he, He's got like brown robes on and he's got a hood over his head. He's leaning down. But I sent you a picture of the best person I've ever seen. His name's Igor Kutoy, and he looks so much, and he behaves and acts. He's a world-known composer, Russian composer. I mean, why am I going to pick people from Russia? They just happen to look exactly like him. And, but 
I hope you can show that picture that I sent you of the Holy Spirit. That'd be nice. And uh, so it's amazing that after all these years, four people show up that have the same faces and behavior. All right. So I'm, I'm all of a sudden the angel, I see his arms come in front of me and he reaches down, and lifts my legs and I go into a prone position and he starts slowly pushing me towards my head of my body. And I go in through my head. Now, a lot of people say it's painful when they go back in. Uh, you know, I've heard that from a few people told me the life after that. It was, there was no pain. It, I was put in with much care. The Holy Spirit standing there. The angels gently putting me back in my body. And then it's like he, he listens for the heartbeat. I hear the heartbeat. You know, and then I open my eyes. And when I open my eyes, the angels are in front of me. Half of them are in front of me. Half of them were still behind me, but I see them in front of me and I see the angel who's carrying me. I re realize it's him that he's now they're in front of me. Now they look kind of small. I don't understand that, you know, but they're flying into a, a brilliant light. Now I have a big light over my head, the operating light or whatever light it was. And nobody was in the room. Nobody except the Holy Spirit that I could see. I saw no one. Had they given up on me? I don't know. So, um, I the, the doctor still hadn't arrived. I, I found out that later. So, I I assume they assume I'm dead, and uh, I see the angels in front of me, and I'm determined to look at his face. You know, because the the angels are like standing like in a circle, and one would step in the middle of the circle and start flying into the light. And so I realized it's him that's going to fly into the light. And I'm determined I'm going to see his face. Why is he flying away? He's supposed to be here with me. I, I, I'm crying tears so much because he's leaving. Because I can't believe that, man, this whole thing is getting messed up. What's happening, you know? And he's flying. I don't know why he's flying. But he's flying in slow motion. And they're all looking like they're going to fly. I don't understand. But I look to my right. And there's a fog rolling in on me, a sinister dark fog that's rolling in on me. And I'm like, I know that cloud's bad, that when it takes over me, I won't be able to see them anymore. I didn't realize how bad that cloud was. But the angels did, and now I know they were simply escaping Satan's snare. But I was, I was helpless, right? Hmm. It's Satan's snare is what it was. And I'll, I'll explain it to you. Uh, you know, it's like, it's kind of like, when Satan talked to God about Job, God, that's not fair. I'm going to do this too. You know, well, you, you know, Satan gets leniency to do a few things, you know. And obviously he didn't think it was fair that I was coming back with an angel. So now the Holy Spirit's standing there. But the Holy Spirit intervened because just as I saw the angel's face, he was looking at me seriously. And if you have a picture of that, uh, I think it's the angel looking at me, number three. That's what he looked like as I saw his face. And as I got the tears out of my eyes, I managed to get the blinding light and blink and see his face. That's what his face looked like. It's burned into my memory. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit was standing behind me now. He intervened on the, the cloud moving in on me. And he, and he pointed and he said, always speak out loud with your voice. So you will always know this was not a dream. Now, he said this twice to me because I I was like, oh, oh my goodness, are you the Holy Spirit? You are the Holy Spirit, right? And standing at my feet. Now you're behind me because you're talking to me in telepathy. And, and you know, just like I've done with everybody. Else, I said, you're the Holy Spirit. And he says it again. Speak with your voice so you always know this is not a dream it would be 40 years later when i find out what that sentence meant it was the most brilliant sentence it was like you had the greatest lawyer defender on your case who told you the secret code to break the code it was brilliant that that's why i guess we have to do a part two because it's amazing how that sentence broke the code the curse so all of a sudden as soon as he said that i couldn't make a voice work the the clouds rolling over me and i and I just said, and all of a sudden the angels start turning into silhouettes, into shadows, because I'm coming back to this world. And and 
and they all start flying. They, they start flying, and I, I know now they're getting away from the cloud, and they start flying. So I think they're leaving. I think they're all leaving. I'm very upset. They're all leaving, and mm. especially the one that's supposed to stay with me, right? My soulmate, and I don't understand it because then the cloud goes over me, and just as it's rolling over, I make my voice work and I say the dumbest thing any human could say. I say, I it was not very profound. I said, what are those electronic seagulls? That's all I can say. They reminded me of seagulls on my son's Atari game at the time. You know, they turned into silhouettes, you know, because they're just flying like, you know, they're just all flying and they all taken off behind me. And they're just all flying. It's like the Air Force is leaving. You know, like, hmm. and I, and so I said this ridiculous sentence. <laughs> you know, I came back to my foolish mind, right? And um, and in that instant, I forgot who the angel was. I forgot who he was. I forgot. And and the last look he gave me, he smiled. He smiled at me as if he changed his age. And before he flew away, he kind of seemed to change his age and smiled at me, and he looked younger. And and all I could think was. Who are you? Are, do I know you? Are you the one? That, are you the one that carried me? I totally forgot him. I forgot our plan. I forgot everything. I was the weakest link. God tried to warn me. You know, I thought I was so strong or so tough. I can face anything. And with an angel, I can do anything. Oh yeah, they all knew. God all knew. Uh, everybody in heaven knew. Yeah, you're pretty weak. You're gonna be weak. So my mind was erased about the angel. Uh, but the Holy Spirit had burned his face into my memory and that sentence into my memory. Hmm. And so that was how it ended. And then it was like an hour later, the doctor showed up. And and then they took me into another room. Oh, as, as I yelled that crazy sentence, medics rushed in there and rushed me out they realized I was alive, rushed me out and, and put me on a, a gurney and they took me to another room to wait for the doctor. He got there like an hour later. So no doctor sent me back. You know what I mean? Mm. There was no doctor in any of this. I was literally in God's hands the entire time. Wow. And Jesus, the great physician, had sent me back. So the doctor comes in and he says, and I talked to him a few years ago and he remembers all of this incident. And and he's a Christian, you know, and he had me tell it to his doctors and his nurses. And, uh, but the thing is, he said to me, now, he said, and it's very clear to me that he said this, I never forgot it. Now, he, he's foggy on that memory, but I remember. He said to me, as I'm on the screen, he goes, I was asleep when they called me, and I fell back asleep. I'm sorry. He goes, but when I <laughs> fell back asleep, someone came to me in my dream and told me, what was wrong with you that you're bleeding internally from a ruptured ovarian cyst i didn't know women got ovarian cysts once a month that can rupture if you hit really hard so uh he said someone told him and i knew it was jesus who told him you know wow. so and so he rushed me into surgery and then he told me later it's the craziest thing we got into surgery i just started ripping just you know to save your life to ripping your your body apart basically you know just with a knife you know find out where you're leaking from and when they finally found it because i have a long scar and when they finally found it he goes it had already cauterized itself hmm. jesus had cauterized it wow so anyway and there's That's a amazing. lot to, there's That's a lot more but that would be a part two that's really fascinating about how god woke me up out of the fog well you know clinically speaking um you you wouldn't be alive if it was left to uh the doctors and uh the staff at the hospital because you would have bled out yeah. and you would not have come back but the lord intervened essentially cauterized which again is supernatural you know vessels just don't automatically you know you, cauterize. You just they continue to bleed out but, you know, this is such an incredible account. There's so many facets and questions, Gail, that, uh, that I've kind of been circling through my mind in terms of your experience. A, you had an experience with these angels who reached out to you 
and they took you on a journey. It was through America you were actually seeing over what would be eventually revealed to you as this place in New York City, but you were headed toward heaven. Then you met up under this, uh, over this uh, glassy area in heaven, which also I had witnessed that uh, that same kind of Did field you? of glass, if you will. No, you're so, kidding. Yes. Yes. You're kidding. Yes, the third I, wrote, heaven. I wrote about it. As a matter of fact, and and uh, uh, that that about the that that field of glass, I it just pouring out, uh, and that it looked like a a pool and i thought the i thought the i thought the angels would have difficulty the people that were walking across it would have difficulty walking because it looked kind of like an ice rink uh, i did not know that a clear ice rink and yet they they were you know walking across it with ease so obviously they weren't slipping on it but anyway that aside uh you were bef face to face before god who took you on this journey now back through earth to the other side which would be new york city yeah. where you saw this woman in this mailbox and you found discovered at that point why why george washington was downtrodden in heaven because he was seeing this maybe the same thing that was revealed to him at some other point this country uh, was that the united states of america had fallen away from god and it god changes. was angry because his people, his creation, greatest creation, which is you and me and others who are watching this, humankind, was ignoring God and not relating to him. And that was the reason that he created us to relate to, to him and that he was with us all this time and we were basically ignoring him. And that's the message that you implored God in heaven with that return me so I can tell people that message. And so I'm going to allow you to, or not allow, I'm mean, it's going to be my blessing and others to hear you pray for our audience. Oh my gosh. And there are those in other parts of the world, your nation has fallen away. The United States has fallen away. So no one is exempt. No, no nation has been attempted, no. but more importantly, us, as people, especially those who are believers in Christ, have ignored God far too much. Yes. So you come back with that message in a very profound way, Gail. And any last words before, uh, before you pray for our audience? You know, America, if you're from another country, if someone's from another country, <clears throat> I knew, <clears throat> and I think we all know, if America falls, the world falls. You know, as someone told, as Reagan said, uh, if America falls, there's no place to run. This is the last stand of freedom. And, you know, this is where people run to. I know a lot of people, a lot of immigrants have come here, you know, fleeing tyranny in their uh, place. We have to stand up. And I, I believe with all my heart that if individual Americans and people all over the world fall in love with God, he's worth falling. The gifts he gives you, it's, it's, it's magnificent. I mean, there's no reason not to be in love with God. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's actually foolish not to be in love with God. Nothing on earth is worth what heaven is. And heaven's forever. This is only temporary. Yeah. That's why I'm not that upset about my broken body, my coming back and aging, you know, to be able to tell people. Uh, it, because this is only temporary. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'd yeah. love to pray for And we you. get one shot on this earth. You got yep. you know, those of us who have been returned, are returned well, for a purpose. Your purpose yeah. is very, uh, very evident. Uh, but 99, whatever percent, uh, are not going to return. So this no, is 99. It. They you wouldn't know, want to. Reincarnated. You're not going to be, you know, Jesus is the only way he said as much There's not, not some other pathway. He's the way, the and, truth and life. No one comes to the father, but through him. So, right. uh, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and savior, now's the time. 
There's no promise of a tomorrow, no promise of the next moment, uh, as Gail and I have learned. And so uh, we invite you now to surrender your life to Jesus as your Lord for what he did for you on the cross, that he shed his blood so that if you ask him to forgive you, if you repent of your sins, and all of us, all of us have sinned, and ask him to become Lord of your life, invite that Holy Spirit to indwell you, to guide you, to direct you all the days of your life, so that Jesus Christ is now your Lord and Savior. You're going to see heaven, and you will be face to face with the Lord God Almighty. So now I'm turning this back to you, Gail, Please to pray for our audience. I would be so honored after 42 years to get to do that. Oh my goodness. Okay. And you know, when I pray, because I've stood face to face with God, I usually don't close my eyes. I'm looking at him again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So forgive me if I'm not closing my eyes because I'm like looking at him and, and people need to realize God's right in front of you. You know, um, so I, I would like to pray and say, Father, Heavenly Father, this it's me, Gail, as you all know. <laughs> and, you know, God and Jesus who sent me back. Now, Randy, Randy has given me the choice, uh, the, the opportunity to, to tell what you allowed me to come back to tell. Randy is obviously your choice. Bless him, Lord, and bless his ministry. Oh my goodness, God! You obviously you obviously favor him very much, and um, I ask for the people. It's in my voice. Holy Spirit, please make sure that everyone under the sound of my voice never, ever sees hell. Never sees hell. Dog them. Do whatever you have to do to people who, who, who don't know you. Bless the ones that do know you. Help them to grow with you. But the ones that don't know you, God, under the sound of my voice, take over, Holy Spirit. Sick them. Get them. <laughs> for the kingdom of God, for their own sake, change their lives. And I pray, God, that every person in the sound of my voice will make it to heaven. And that could be hundreds of thousands, millions. But God, I, I asked to come back to show them the way. And I've shown them the way. It's Jesus. And, and anyone who's not been baptized, I pray, God, that you will press them to go get baptized. Um, because I learned how important that is when you cross to the other side. And I, I just make... The experience that you allow me to have with you resonate with them and let them know that you are a, a person. You have feelings. When they're sinning, when they're ignoring you, they're hurting your feelings. You are God. You are mighty. You are the judge. You can wipe us out with a breath, but you tolerate us and you're patient. God Almighty. Let everyone in the sound of my voice start just talking to you like their best friend. You will take it from there. If you, the people who I am praying for, will start just talking to God like your best friend, mm -hmm. then I came back for a reason. Thank you, God. Bless this audience. Bless Randy. God bless America. May we turn this around. I know. George Washington only had 3% of the population to, to win America's freedom. We only need 3%. Uh, give us one out of 1,000. It doesn't matter. Gideon's army. Give us Gideon's army in America. Mm -hmm. Let's turn back to God. Let's on fire, in love, unashamed, bold, yeah. stand up. Let's don't accept evil. We can't. No. Okay. In Jesus' name I pray. Bless us, God. God bless. Help America to stand up and finish the race. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. And we pray for you, Gail, and your arm for the Thank restoration you. of nerve endings, for the full healing. Thank Lord, you. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, knowing the power in that name, that you would just infuse a newness 
of uh, nerves, of muscle, everything that is necessary. And we, we look forward to hearing a, a praise report from Gail yeah. as to those many thousands of you who are praying uh, for her healing uh, and restoration in that way as well. So, uh, Gail, thank you so, so much thank for you, sharing Larry. with us. Now, you um, do have some contact information. We want to ask you about that. You also have produced uh, a lengthy, um, we've gone through, a, uh, I guess, the Reader's Digest version of your <laughs> account, but yeah. you've gone through a series of, of videos. So tell us uh, where people can find you. Well, I'm on YouTube, and let me tell you, it's kind of a miracle that I figured out at 68 years old how to make a YouTube video. God's been guiding me the whole way. Uh, but anyway, I've managed to make, I've made it up to the point where I've just told you in my videos. I'm telling every detail because I found that God won't let me leave out one detail. You know, if I do, he brings it to my mind that I better put it in there. And I think that some detail might mean something to somebody. And like an engineer, I'm giving the full report in my, and I'm telling you in an unusual way, I'm using every song, fragment of the song that the Holy Spirit is putting before me that he wants me to use to try to make people feel the emotion that I felt. I want to take them with me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, every step of the way. And now I am still finishing up part six and seven which is what I'd love to be able to tell your audience. Uh, it's very difficult to be able to, to tell it, but I'm I'm working on it, and it should be out soon in the next couple months. Part six and seven will be the end where I tell how God woke me out of the devil's snare. I mean, mm -hmm. Satan basically put me to sleep like like a fairy tale, you know, when it came to the angel and our plan. But God used a guy named Damash Kudebergen who looks exactly like the angel. The first time I saw him, I thought, God, did you send my angel back? Am I dying again? You know, I, I couldn't believe it. I, and, and and interestingly enough, I'm sure Dimash has no idea. Or does he? I don't know how God works these things. He is reenacting portions of my life after death experience in many, many of his performances. Mm. That's interesting. And Igor Kertoy, the guy who looks like the Holy Spirit is working with the mesh now. And I'm like, this is a lot of coincidences here, but uh, I'd love to tell that. I think that is showing that, you know, when you see God's face, it's not the end of it. He's, he's, he's still working with, you, you know, and he has performed some amazing miracles right in front of the world's eyes that I know are miracles. So I'd love to be able to tell it. So I'm be telling it part six and seven and it will stun the world. Mm. So thank you, Randy. Well, thank you, Gail. We'll have to invite you back then. So we'll thank have you. in the body of this message, we'll have links uh, so you can watch the series uh, of videos that Gail has, has produced. Uh, and it has a lot of visuals in it, as you've seen only a few here. But uh, I, again, thank you so, so much. A tremendous message and story. So, uh, we have some great news for you. If you are indeed in Christ Jesus, be of good cheer, because heaven is in your future. Until next time, take care, and God bless. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like further information, go to our website at randyk.org, where our mission is simple to share the great news of God's love.